Hey everyone, welcome back to Flipside. I'm Tarek from the data engineering team. And today we'll be going mad and looking into one of the hottest NFT projects on Solana, Mad Lads. So Solana, what is it? It's a layer one blockchain, essentially an open infrastructure for which scalable crypto applications can be built on. It supports a variety of different types of apps, some notables being DEXs like Orca, popular NFT projects such as Mad Lads and Clanosaurs, as well as innovative NFT marketplaces such as TensorSwap, which is a bit different from traditional NFT marketplaces as it operates as an AMM for NFTs. So over here in our Flipside app, we have a number of different chains to explore. And here we'll be exploring Solana. So if you scroll over to your left, you can see our little Solana logo. Within our core schema, we have a number of different tables that you can explore. Under the schema, we have basically three flavors of tables. We have our dim tables, easy tables, and our fact tables. These are the ones that contain the meat of our data and focus on a specific type of information, such as swaps, NFTs, complete transactions, et cetera. And then to augment that, we have our DIM tables. These are usually sourced from a variety of on-chain and off-chain sources. And the third type of table we have in here is our easy table. It typically just contains data derived from our fact and our DIM tables, but it's in an easier to use format. So within our app, you can get a preview of the data just by clicking on it and you get a quick snapshot of all the columns that are available. Along with that, you can select the preview table button over at the right side to get a good look of what the data actually looks like with the columns and the specific data contained within the table. So now we have a feel of what tables we have. Let's dig a little deeper. You could go to our docs by selecting this view docs icon next to the chain name. Within these docs, you get a list of all of our tables. Let's say we're interested in NFT sales. We could click on here and this opens up a page that contains all of our columns along with a quick description as well as the type of data that's contained in there. And if you're interested in what exactly a column contains, you could select the description and it contains a short but sweet intro into all of the different information within this column. Let's do a little querying. Solana is a massive hub for NFTs and one of the hottest projects has been Mad Lads. So let's do a little exploration on this NFT. To explore Mad Lads, let's figure out what tables we need to use. Within our core tables, you might notice the core fact NFT sales. That seems like a likely option. So here we'll explore our Solana core fact NFT sales table. What I like to do is run a quick little query to see what exactly this table contains and how and what it will return. This is a little bit more hands-on method. So here we have program ID, the, who bought it, who sold it, the mint of the NFT and the sales amount. We got a good understanding of what this table contains. So we're interested in Mad Lads. And we have this table containing all of the NFT sales for every single NFT on Solana. We want to drill down to Mad Lads. So how can we do that? So one table that we could use that's super useful is our dim labels table. I'm not exactly sure how we're naming the Mad Lads contract. So I essentially put in where the label is like Mad Lads. So it contains the string and then the result pops up. We see that the labels does contain Mad Lads and it is NFT and we're, lab we're labeling it exactly as Mad Lads. So here we have a label for all these different addresses, all these different NFTs that are designated as Mad Lads. We're selecting from our NFT sales table and we want to drill down and only get the Mad Lad sale. We're going to have to join to our core dim labels table. We'll left join on our Solana core dim labels table. And we want to join on the mint from our NFT sales table, the address within our BIM labels, these two should match up. Since all we want is our Mad Lads tails, we'll filter down to only labels containing Mad Lads, where the label equals Mad Lads. And I know that Mad Lads was launched around 420, 419. So let's filter it down a little bit to April 19. Also, I only want to see succeeded sales. So let's filter down to only succeeded ones. So let's select all the columns which are in our core fact NFT sales table as well as the label from our label table. All right, so we finished our query here. So we're selecting all the columns from our core facts NFT sales table, as well as a label from our dim labels. We're gonna filter down to only our Mad Lads sales, where they're all succeeded and where our block timestamp is older than the launch of the Mad Lads NFT. So now we, we've ran our query. If you scroll away to the right, the only ones that have shown up are the ones labeled as Mad Lads along with the sales amount, mints, seller and purchaser, et cetera. So now we have all of our Mad Lad sales. Now I'm interested in what are the number of sales that have occurred on TensorSwap and kind of the trend for that over the past few weeks or days. So we're gonna create another CTE where this contained all of our sales. Now we're gonna filter down to only ones on TensorSwap. So here we'll select our block timestamp and I want the count of sales that have occurred on TensorSwap for Mad Lads. And I also want the number of unique buyers, how many unique buyers have actually been 
purchasing Mad Lads and are, and are trading for it. I want to see the marketplace and I want to see a total amount of sales for Mad Lads on TensorSwap in Seoul. So we're going to select from our initial table, which contains all the NFT sales. But this time I want only sales that occurred on TensorSwap. So we're going to filter it down by marketplace. I'm not really sure what we call TensorSwap within our marketplace column. So I'm going to do a query where I'm searching for anything like Tensor, where it contains the word Tensor in it. And this should pop up every sale that has happened on an NFT marketplace that matches Tensor, which in this case should only be TensorSwap. I'm interested in the daily volume. So with that being the case, I'm going to group by date and marketplace as well, just so we can see the marketplace when it pops up. And I'm also going to order by date descending. So this way it shows the more, most recent date. One more thing to add, instead of block timestamp, we'll change this into a date. So instead of getting the actual block timestamp with the minutes, seconds, et cetera, we're going to group everything by its specific day. So now we have our query right now. Let's see what we, what it comes up with. And of course, with millions of people watching, there's a lot of pressure to write correct SQL. So here's the updated SQL that creates the table and gets us the information that we were looking for. Yeah, baby. That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. When we look at our results, we see that everything's grouped by day. We get the number of sales, the number of unique buyers, the marketplace, which we don't really need in here since we filtered by to TensorSwap, but I like to include it in there. And then we also get the volume in Seoul for each of these days on TensorSwap. So now that we have our rows produced, let's create a little chart and kind of visualize uh, what's going on here. So we go to our bottom and select add chart. I think a line chart would probably be the best approach for this. Let's title it. Mad Lads daily sales on TensorSwap. So on our X axis, we want it to be by date. On our Y axis, we want the volume in Seoul every day. And so our chart automatically pops up and it showcases what you expect, right? In initial, right after mint, the number of sales skyrocketed. That was the max. And then over time, it slowed down a bit. So taking a peek at May 5th, we saw it had about 400,000 in USD volume. I was interested in what was the average sale or what was the average size of a sale for Mad Lads throughout these dates? I quickly added a column for the average sales amount by day. And it looks like the average sale was about 60 to 75 sole, which at time recording, do the quick maths. Two plus two is four minus one. That's three quick maths. Which is about $1,500. So the average is about $1,500 per sale. So that's a significant amount of a volume for the average sale. So that'll be all for today. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned something about our tables and how you get started with exploring our Solana data. Have fun querying and I'll see you in the next video.